let go, let go, let go. Loose and loose and baby, you don't have to carry the weight of the world in your muscles and bones. Let go, let go, let go. Holy breath and holy name, we. souls. <laughs> What's good? It is very exciting to be here. Um, in my time here, I never got to grace the pulpit yet, so it's exciting to see you from this view. <laughs> I want to start by sharing a story. In the eighth grade, I learned what the word emulate meant. Our English class had an assignment to embody a poet, to share some about their life, and then to read one of their poems to the class. I was nervous. It felt like an early Halloween anxiety attack. <laughs> do I do one of the characters or poets I know and act like it's not weird that they're white and I'm black? Or I don't even know any black ones that don't die, so no, I should go with a woman, but they're still white. But they're a woman, but do, I don't want people to think I don't know I'm not white, but I don't know any black characters. And I didn't do Halloween a lot, bottom line. And so, needless to say, as an, a non-fan of Halloween, for this assignment, I waited until the midnight hour, the night before the due date. And I, like a mad scientist, clicking away on the computer, remembered the one black female poet I knew, Maya Angelou. I had only read one or two of her poems up to that point, but what I had remembered was they met me where I was. And then, looking online, I found her poem, Phenomenal Woman. Y'all, I felt terrified and like weeping when I read it. So I printed it off and was ready for school the next day. In the morning, I put on pearls, fake pearls, because I thought Maya's classy. <laughs> and I felt a little stumped on the outfit. And then my logic was, she's pretty serious about the business of self-love. So business casual? <laughs> Remember, not much Halloween experience. <laughs> so it's a bit sad um, that I hadn't yet been introduced to Nikki Giovanni or Audre Lorde or Alice Walker. And it seems neither had the other black girl in class who came as a better dressed Maya Angelou. <laughs> and it's also a loss to every other student in our class, white or of color, who were denied the lyrics of Nikki, the depth of Audrey, or the storytelling of Alice, we all missed something out of our humanity in a whitewashed English class. I have a confession. I haven't said this out loud <laughs> before. It was up to 13, and I'm pretty sure that assignment that I genuinely believed only superhumans made a difference. Gods among mere mortals could shape a world towards justice and the rest of us, at best, we're in the way. And the characteristics I will share with you now 
of the saving hero were as follows. Infallibility. The short list. (laughs) (laughs) Not making a mistake was the main difference between them and me. They always knew what to do. I didn't. They never made a mistake. I was swimming in them. And so my kid logic deduced from history and church and books, there was one shortcut to sainthood, and I was going to do it. I would be a martyr. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Dying tragically and for a cause was realistically my only chance at having a legacy. And so, as a child, I daydreamed on my public, courageous, and sacrificial final act of love, often. And I still remember one of the classics. I will set the scene. There I am, a youngish adult, hanging out with some of the children at my combo orphanage in school with free tuition and family-styled housing. And then someone with misplaced anger and frustration barges into the cafeteria with a gun. And then, in a tussle, it would end with me laying my life on the line for the children under my care, and I would die. This bummer daydream used to give me hope, hope that I could eventually do something that mattered. And I planned nonprofits at seven and power redistribution models at 12. But even then, in my subconscious, I thought those couldn't or wouldn't measure up to a good old blood sacrifice. I was simply too human and needed sainthood as my only chance. That is, until I was told to emulate a poet in the eighth grade. Instead of glorifying a hero on the pedestal, making them untouchable, and unattainable, I was asked to bring them down, fully human, and hang out. Learn from them. Practice what they did and tend to the seeds that they cared for in themselves that grew to greatness. Greatness in a human frame. A couple years later, I read, a couple years after being 13, I read Ancestor Sister Friend Maya Angelou's autobiographies, all five of them. And while kicking back with her, I learned a lot from that glorious woman. Like when people show themselves, believe them. Be mindful of how you show up in a space, because people will remember. And rock it to the bone and know how phenomenal you are in every sense of the word. I also learned what a woman dedicated to disrobing shame can achieve in love. Love of self, love of God and good love of community. I read that the pursuit of curiosity and conviction were a promise for adventure, wild adventure. And I distinctly remember, probably around 15, putting down the books and thinking to myself, she did all this and didn't have to die? (laughs) She's super old, she's not super dead. That divorced the false equation of sacrifice with service in my heart and in my mind. We can serve love until we're two weeks old, until we're two years old, until we're 102, and that is what will touch lives. Serving love. Not a hyper-focus on killing our humanity and sacrifice. Rosa Parks is well known for keeping her seat in a segregated bus which was the final impetus for the woman-organized 13-month-long Montgomery bus boycott. It resulted in the city of Montgomery being forced to desegregate their buses, add more stops in black neighborhoods, and acknowledge humanity. For her organizing and participation and activism, then and with the NAACP and the black power movements, for decades, Parks said, quote, I want to be remembered as someone who wanted to be free so others could be free. She said, I want to be remembered as someone who wanted to be free so others could be free. She had a vision, and she did what she could to shape her community towards that vision. Her legacy wasn't sacrifice. 
It was a fierce vision and a clear determination to the cause, come what may. Also, Park's vision was charged with an embodied understanding of our interconnectivity. She didn't put others before herself. That's dangerous. She did not put others before herself. That's dangerous. She put her vision before comfort. That is admirable. That is sustainable. That is emulatable. And that is what I want to lift up from her life and practice in my own. For us to all be free, we're going to have to get uncomfortable and break out of the paradigm we're co-creating. She served for all of us and didn't leave herself behind. Yo, that's holistic love. (laughs) Maya modeled that for me and she invited me to be as big and grand as I am and to serve love. Love with all my heart. And that meant bringing me along for the journey. When we aspire to divinize men or women, gender non-conforming persons, any leader, including ourselves, and making them into untouchable gods, we remove the joy of growth, the power of collaboration, the honor and pleasure of service, and the magic of our emotions and our intuition and of being a student. Y'all, that sucks. It ain't real. What's real is that we're each human. What's real is that we are inherently delightful and stuffed with potential. What's real is we are imperfect and whole. We are dehumanized when pushed up to perfectionism or down to inferiority. We are human in the space between. The magic, the mess of life, creativity happens here. It's where love lives. Today, we're going to practice together, liberating our language. We're going to fine tune our posture of gratitude and reverence for women this month and beyond and anyone else we admire. Who's down for the cause? Hey, that's what's up. So it comes to two points. First, perfectionism isn't human. Messing up, imagining, collaborating, Recreating is. Perfectionism isn't human. Messing up, imagining, collaborating, and recreating is. This is the good kind of sticky. It's a multiplicity of humility, confidence, and responsibility. When accepted and leaned into, it creates a beautiful, justice-oriented vessel for good, for God in this world. Second, Sacrifice isn't ideal, service is. We as a culture have falsely equated sacrifice with service. In reality, sacrifice never was the point. Love and commitment to vision was and is. When we reclaim and celebrate the humanity of great teachers and leaders, we name the skills and practices we can do as well how we can apply the magic of their life into our own. Church, let's do this together. When we are showing gratitude, we will let go. Say let go. Let go. Of, I'll never be able to repay you. And reach for, reach for. Reach for. Your fierce vision ignites my own zeal for liberation. For this, I am deeply grateful. Church, when we are honoring a leader, let's let go. Let go of thank you for being a selfless servant and reach for. for. We honor your life of self-awareness, of self-reflection and self-love, urging us to reclaim ourselves and join the work too. When commemorating leaders in our lives and families, let us let go. We, oh, she never offended anyone. And reach for. Reach for. Her vision trumped her comfort time and time again. Church, when casting a vision of who we wish to be to create change in this world, let us let go of superlatives like always and never and forever and perfectionism and reach for. for. I am delightfully human and urgently needed. Church, say with me one more time, let go go. of she or he or they 
did what no one else could have and instead reach for? They did what they could with what they had and multiplied it with love beyond belief. Sign me up too. I want you to take a breath and close your eyes with this energy. What are you letting go of to reach for? What are you letting go of to reach for? Now think about the vision. What are you reaching for? What's worth dropping it all away? Comfort, familiarity, letting it go and reaching for this. Love beyond belief. What does that feel like? What does it look like in your family, in your life? in your heart. Say, I let go so I can reach for. I'm a let go so I can reach for. May we do this together. May we feel the flame of our vision of love warming our hearts and root it in service. May it be so. My brother, you're my sister, so take me by the hand. Together we will work until we're done. There's no foe that can defeat us when we're walking side by side. As long as there is love, we will We're so happy you're visiting with us online today. We love connecting with people all across the country and around the world sharing our powerful message of love beyond belief. There's something new happening here. You can now join All Souls as a virtual member. Our virtual membership is designed for friends who live outside of Tulsa, Oklahoma and who want to engage with All Souls in a meaningful way. You can be part of an expanding family, a global family really, wherever you are. If you live in Oklahoma, Ohio, or Orange County, California, Canada, or Cameroon. By becoming a virtual member, you'll be able to deepen your connections with members and friends here in Tulsa and with members wherever you are. Each week, you'll receive special All Souls content tailored for you, our virtual members. Virtual members have access to pastoral care, to personal prayers, and also receive invitations to exclusive web events. You can learn more, and if you're ready, you can become a virtual member today by visiting allsoulschurch.org forward slash virtual membership. We're grateful our ministries are having a positive impact on your life, and we want to share the good news of Love Beyond Belief with more and more people. So no matter what, we need your support to keep this ministry growing and thriving, so please consider making a gift today. You can do so by texting Love BB for Love Beyond Belief to 73256 or simply visit our website. You are a blessing in our lives. May you be blessed. And be a blessing.